Okay. Oh. Before we dig in today's project, it needs to be said, I am not happy with the lighting in this workspace. And of course, in this video, I've talked to my production team and I think they're working on it. This is the sustain unit out of our player piano project. Its job is to operate the damper or the sustain pedal from the coating in the piano roll. Currently, it don't work. As I open and close the signal hose, the pneumatic should open and close, and it's not. I think I'll see myself in. This is the valve box, which under normal circumstances is a low pressure environment. Well, good morning. Here we can see the board that contains the pouches, or valve actuators, that move the valves up and down when inflated with atmospheric pressure. This small pouch that I'm inflating now is the primary valve pouch. There are two valves in the system to operate this pneumatic or bellows. The primary valve knows its place in the world and opens first when a hole is exposed in the piano roll. This valve opens a hole that is larger than the hole in the piano roll. It opens this port, which is connected to the secondary valve in the system. This secondary pouch opens the secondary valve. This valve also knows its place in the world. Its job is to allow air either in or out of the bellows. Opening the bellows to suction, of course, closes them, and venting the bellows to atmosphere allows them to open with the help of a spring. With the primary valve removed, we can see the hole that it opens, allowing atmosphere to inflate the secondary pouch, which opens the secondary valve. Well, nothing to do now but start fixing basically everything. This secondary inside valve seat is warped beyond repair, and this is a critical part. Hmm. While that epoxy cures, I'll take a look at the valve box. These six threaded holes help hold the pouch board in place. It's imperative that there are no leaks in the system so that the pouches don't trip prematurely and set off the valves and we don't want them to. Drip screw threads can cause leaks, so I'll treat these threaded holes with CA glue. When doing this, it's very important not to get any glue on the sur- While that dries, we'll take a look at this little guy. The pouch board. I've stripped off all the old leather gasket and pouches and sanded it flat. Now we'll make a new gasket. Time for new pouches. These pouches actuate the valves and need to have a dished shape so that they can inflate with atmosphere like a balloon and actuate the valves. This pouch setting tool helps preform the pouch to the right shape. If the pouches were glued flat like a drum head, they wouldn't be able to move up or down. We know the pouches inflate with atmosphere when the signal hose opens up. When the signal hole closes, we need a way to vent that atmosphere out. This bleed cup, which has a center hole much smaller than the hole in the paper roll, allows that atmosphere to be vented out from underneath the pouches so they can deflate and the valves can close. These bleed cups are always exposed to suction and are in line with the input channels. Since the hole is smaller in the bleed cup than it is in the paper roll, when the hole in the roll opens, introducing a rush of atmospheric higher pressure underneath the pouch, which the bleed cup becomes overwhelmed by. Ooh, I feel you, little buddy. All right, let's see what we can do to clean up these valve parts. <gasps> Ugh. Wish my lighting was better in here. All right, 
I'll do the side that the leather's glued on. <sighs> Gosh, I wish my lighting was better in here. <gasps> I wish my lighting was better in here. <gasps> it worked! <laughs> Cake break. Okay, the pouches are done. The valves are rebuilt and in. Let's put this thing together and see what it does. We'll do it without the pneumatic first. I want to simulate the conditions that are in the piano as close as possible, so I've got a very long length of tubing because this signal hose runs from all the way to the top to the tracker bar to the bottom of the piano. And then the tube that I'm testing with, I know it doesn't show up too well, but I've got a spare bleed cup that's open to the size of the hole in the tracker bar. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. How thrilling. So that big leak we're hearing, or that big rush of air, is through there, and that's what goes to our pneumatic. So as I open this, the pouch under here inflates, lifts that valve up. The small opening here allows air to flow down under this larger pouch, opening this valve, opening up flow through here. And I don't know if I explained this very well earlier, but this this larger valve, just like this one, has two positions, off and on. When it's off, when I close this, this valve is down, so this, this opening here is actually open to this port. So these two are open to atmosphere, which allows this pneumatic to open, because it needs to get air somewhere after all the air has been evacuated out of it. So right now these two are open, to atmosphere but not to suction so it's closed we don't have any suction flow but as soon as that opens it closes off this port to the atmosphere moves up to do that and opens up this down into this chamber mounted back in the piano, I can manipulate it manually and simulate its operation. When the bellows collapses, it raises the dampers on the piano, which I still need to regulate, by the way. Next week, choose, choose your, own your own adventure. adventure. But would you rather we look at the air motor or regulating the piano? Both need to be done, but you do have a say in this. Let me know, if you want. No pressure. Well, it's a work in progress, but who isn't? <laughs>